this is Ben Simon, music director of the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra, and I'd like to welcome you to The Simon Says Show. Today we tackle a pressing issue and one very close to my heart. What really is the difference between a violin and a viola? According to the well-known joke, the viola burns longer, as indeed it should. It's heavier and contains more wood than the violin. The standard violin is 14 inches in length, and that doesn't include the neck or the fingerboard, which stick out the top. The viola is a less standardized length, but usually measures 15 and a half to 16 and a half inches. All things considered, the viola should burn about 50% longer than the violin, which is handy information to have when you're running low on kindling. In truth, there are many more similarities than differences between these two instruments. They're both in the violin family, constructed the same way, and played the same way. I think of them as musical siblings, the chatty, active younger brother, the more thoughtful older sister, but like all siblings, they squabble constantly. Why are all viola jokes so short? So violinists can understand them. The violin and the viola both have four strings and share three of them. The lower three strings of the violin, A, D, G, are the upper three strings of the viola. Now the fourth string of the violin is its highest string, that bright E string. And the fourth string of the viola is its lowest string, that dark and mellow C string. Here are two Bach excerpts to illustrate their ranges and differences in tone. First, the violin in the beginning of Bach's partita in E major. And now the opening of the C major suite for, well, it was really written for cello, but like everything else, it sounds much better on a viola. Day, the natural brilliance of the violin with that bright E string made it the leader of the string section. Melodies are much easier to hear when they ride on top of the music rather than buried in the middle or somewhere on the bottom. But being in the middle has its advantages. Many famous composers, including Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Dvorak, Schubert, Mendelssohn, Hindemith, all played the viola, and I like to consider it the intellectual of the string quartet. The great Italian Baroque composer, Arcangelo Corelli, was one of the first to prominently feature the violin in his famous sonatas and concerto grossi. <laughs> Unfortunately for violists, Corelli's music was not only extremely popular, but highly influential as well. The floodgate for solo sonatas and concerti for the violin had been opened. This flourishing of the violin did come at the expense of the viola. It was now mostly relegated to secondary parts that could be played by a less skilled player. And thus, the viola joke was born. 
So how do you keep your violin from getting stolen? Put it in a viola case. The difference between violin and viola parts can be illustrated by this example, one of many, many, many from a Haydn string quartet. This is what he writes for the violin. And this for the viola. When I was a wee violinist, it was unusual to come across a violist who had not begun their musical studies on the violin. The viola was larger, thus more difficult for little hands and fingers, but there also was a lingering stigma about the inferiority of viola players. Why do so many people take an instant dislike to the viola? It saves time. This is all changed. Modern instrument makers began crafting smaller violas. Composers began writing viola parts that were every bit equal to violin parts. And smart young players began to realize that strong violas were in great demand. One lingering consequence of the viola inferiority complex is the fact that so many great composers wrote concerti for violin and not for viola. These include Vivaldi, Bach, Haydn, Beethoven, Brahms, Mendelssohn, Brooks, Stravinsky, Prokofiev, and many more. This too is changing. Besides well-known 20th century viola concerti by Bella Bartok, William Walton, and Paul Hindemith, there are fabulous additions to the repertoire by modernists such as John Harbison, Joan Tower, Sophia Jubaidelina, Jennifer Higdon, Aaron J. Kernis, Christoph Pendereski, and even John Williams. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get away from the viola recital. But the jewel in the viola's crown, even if we have to share it with our annoying younger brother, is Mozart's Symphonia Concertante, a double concerto for violin and viola. This masterpiece, written in Mozart's favorite key of E-flat major, belies all the squabbling between our musical siblings and exposes them for the loving sister and brother that they really are. In this excerpt from the heavenly second movement on Dante, we hear the long drawn out melody first in the violin and then with a subtle variation answered by the viola. And in the finale, we find the violin and the viola tumbling playfully over each other like a pair of high-spirited puppies. Despite their differences, they do come from the same branch of the same musical family tree, and no amount of sibling rivalry can really separate them. <laughs>
is Ben Simon signing off for the Simon Says Show. Thanks for listening. And if you're lucky enough to have a sibling, may all your squabbles end as melodiously as they do for Mozart. Be well, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. A shout out to the Medallia Company for their generous sponsorship of the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra this season.